here, I'm back. I'm here today to do part one of my February reading wrap up. This goes to about um, February 14th, so I'm gonna wrap up the first, I think I read eight books that I read in the first half of the month. I did have a pretty good reading month. February, I always try to read a ton of romance, and I think my challenges, this might be the first month that I fail all my challenges because I haven't been reading according to any of my TBRs, which sucks but I have really enjoyed all the romances I've been reading so the first book I read in 24 hours because we had off the first day of February was The Last Chance Library by Freya Samson um this is I would definitely classify more as a like a woman's fiction book but it has to do with reading and it has to do with a library and I just really liked the small town elements of this story it does take place in England which again I really like it I have been dying to go back to England since the pandemic and Hopefully I'll make it back there eventually. But you follow this main character named June, and she's sort of stuck. She's sort of dealing with the after effects of the death of her mom, and she's dealing with a lot of grief. But she works at this library, and this library is in danger of closing. And she has a bunch of, like, residents and, like, people that frequent the library that are trying to save it. And it was really, really cute. I just love how the town sort of banded together to save the library. This book definitely ended in sort of, like, a unique way, and I was really happy with that. There is a romance plotline. I would say it's definitely not the focus. It's much more focused on self-discovery, getting out of your own grief, and just, like, it's a really, really fun read. It's very, very, I cried in this book. I just thought it was really, really fun, and I gave it five stars. Um, just, it was the, it, it was a really fun book for me to read and pick up, um, but if you're looking for a romance, I would not read this. If you're looking more for something about libraries and the impact of libraries, the impact of reading, the impact of a small community, it felt like I was reading about an English version of Stars Hollow, where everyone sort of knew one. It did have a surprise ending that I did not expect, but I really liked it. And I got this rec from Riley from Riley Marie, and I picked it up and I really, really liked it. So that is the first book that I tackled in the month of February. Um, and then the next book that I picked up was an audiobook, and that is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series. Again, another rec from Riley Marie. Um, and this one is the, called The Perilous Undertaking. Here is a photo. This book, I don't think it was my favorite. I think I preferred book one a little bit more. It did have a really unique mystery, but I felt like I rushed my listening of this and I'm probably not going to listen to them on two times speed anymore because I feel like I list, missed a lot of key information, but I really do like the Veronica Speedwell character. I like the framework of the stories. I am so far behind. I'm now in the middle of starting book three in this series, but it is definitely a fun read. Um, and it's very much kind of fits my fancy between historical romances or historical time period, but also mysteries, which I really do like. And I do like both characters quite a bit. So I wound up giving this one three stars and hopefully I will like the subsequent book in the series a little bit more. Um, and then the next book that I picked up was another arc that I got. Um, and this, I went in sort of not knowing a lot about it, but I picked up The Lucky List by Rachel Lippincock. And... I really did like this book. So you basically follow this character named Emily. Um, and she is, again, sort of like the Last Chance Library, dealing with a lot of grief over the death of her mom. Um, it is set in the summer. And she, um, a new girl, a girl she knew when she was much younger, kind of comes back to town to live there. And they sort of have a connection. She also just recently broke up with her boyfriend. Her best friend is away. And she's sort of in a little bit of like a, sort of like in the middle of like everything is sort of going wrong in her life. But she sort of has this connection with a new girl in town, and they sort of work on a list that they found that her mom left in her senior year box. And it was a really fun read. It does deal with a lot of grief. It is an LGBTQ plus novel. I would say there's love triangle elements. There is no cheating in it, but there is love triangle elements in the story. Um, I really liked it. I thought, I thought the list element was really, really fun. It definitely focuses a lot on self-discovery and sort of tackling your past and tackling your grief. And I did really enjoy it. I haven't read anything by this author. I haven't read her Five Feet Apart series, which she wrote with another co-author, but I really liked it. I thought it was a really quick read, one that I really, really flew through. I thought that the characters were nice. I thought the love triangle elements were interesting, which I don't really read a lot of love, love triangles. I've actually read a lot of love triangles this month, which I don't normally read. But I liked it, and I thought it was a nice LGBTQ plus story, but just another story. Again, it's sort of like The Last Chance Library had a lot of self-discovery elements, but there is more of a romance in the story. 
it does, I would say it's more self-discovery, but there is a romance component to it. Um, so yeah, I like this one. I went up giving it four stars, and I will definitely read more by this author in the future. I know she has a new book by herself coming out, which I will probably be checking out. Um, and then the next book that I picked up was an audiobook that I listened to for the third time, and that is Tweet Tweet. Again, I really can't say much about this book because I've talked about it so much, but I really do love it. I think it's probably one of my favorite contemporary books I've read recently. I read it in 2020, which seems like a decade ago. It's Emma Wood's debut. I just love this. It is like elements of so many stories that just make my heart happy. It's set in New York City. You've probably heard about this book, but it basically follows two characters as they are embarking on a Twitter war when their family restaurants are competing. It is You Got Mail meet Hate to Love, and I just loved it has twins in it. It's in New York City. It's such witty banter. Um, I recently, in January, I read her newest book, When You Get a Chance, and really loved it and wanted to reread this, and I really, really loved it. I love listening to it. I'll probably be listening to it every single February because it's definitely one of my favorite romances, and I'm happy that Emma Lord is going to keep writing because I really, really do like her books. Um, and the next book that I picked up was another ERIC, and this is How Not to Fall in Love. Here's a photo. In December, I think it got pushed, because I got this on Nut in that galley, like, over the summer. But it basically follows this main character. I think her name's Harper. Um, and she works at her mom's wedding dress shop, and she has sort of had a really bad unlu unlucky love streak, and she's sort of convinced love is never going to happen for her after a pretty bad breakup she has. But her best friend is a hopeless romantic and falls in love like every single week. And after a pretty bad breakup, she they both agree to like convince Harper to ha teach him how not to fall in love. And they might not they might wind up falling in love. And it was just a really, really cute story. It is a little bit of a messy story. There are elements of cheating that could be argued. I thought it was really, really cute. I think the romance to more was fun. I really did like the friendship elements. I love books about friends to more. It was a bit messier than I like my reads, but I did like how the story wrapped up. I really did like both characters. The one thing that would made this book a little bit better is if we also got the main, the male leads point of view. Like again, Tweak is a, is a good example. I think that book was so compelling to me because we were in both Pepper and Jack's head. This book I think could have benefited a little bit from that, but I wound up giving it 3.75 stars. It was a little bit messy probably messier than the normal books that I read, but it was super fun, and I will say I definitely like this book more than her other book that I read, Heartstrings and Other Things to Mend. That was like a Mansfield Park retelling. I didn't even know it was written by the same author, but I like that one. I didn't love it. This one I definitely liked more and happy that I gave it a chance, and that is the second e-arc that I think I read this month, which is really good for me. So, um, And then the next book that I picked up was... Broken Hearts, Offenses, and Other Things to Men by Katie Finn, which if you don't know is the pen name for Morgan Matson. I don't know. I had very, very conflicting feelings about this book because I went in not thinking I was going to love it. And I did like this book. I probably gave this book like four stars for review. However, it does deal with revenge elements to the story, and I don't know if I'm going to love book two as much as I loved book one. But basically, you follow this character named Gemma, and she, this is kind of like the non-emotional version of Second Chance Summer um, because Gemma has to go back to stay in the Hamptons with her dad. And previously when she lived in the Hamptons with her dad, she sort of made some really, really bad decisions and it sort of affected this one family. But when their paths wind up crossing again, she is desperate to make amends and things don't exactly go according to plan. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. It was a really, really fun summer read. I think the ending sort of surprised me in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Um, so I liked it. I don't know how I'm going to feel about book two in this series. I have kept it on my TBR, so we'll see if it gets read maybe. But I do want to read book three. So I don't know. But it definitely was it, was, it was okay. I think I liked it more than I thought I was. But I am conflicted how I'm going to feel about book two and three. So we'll see. This one was a good read. I'm happy that I finally picked it up because I've had it for so long. So yeah, it was it was okay. It was definitely more of a summer read, not emotional. More read more like Pretty Little Liars to me, which I have liked in the past. So gave this book like 3.75 stars. And if 
you're looking for a non-emotional version of Second Chance Summer, written by the same author, I think you should pick it up. They don't make any caveats for the next two books because I haven't read them yet. Um, and then the next book that I picked up was another e-arc that I got a couple of months back, and this is Of Princes and Promises by Sanaya Mignon. This book I actually really enjoyed more than Of Curses and Kisses. This follows Catherine and Raoul, which you met in the first book. Catherine is like the queen bee at this prestigious boarding school, and Raoul, Raoul is this quite a totally anxious guy who really does love Catherine, but when Catherine's breakup with Adrian does not go according to plan, she's feeling a little bit lackluster, and she wants to make sure she remains on top, so knowing Raoul has feelings for her, she sort of views him as a pawn to sort of make sure that she is still belle of her high school's ball, and still really, really popular, um, but a ma there's a sort of a magical element to this story that sort of, she sort of transforms Raoul into something that he's not, and it was a really interesting book. Um, there is a magical element to it, sort of like Curses and Kisses. But I really like this one. I like that we got both characters' point of view. The writing, I will say, is a little bit simplistic. It did remind me of reading like an A-list novel like when I was younger. But I really did like the characters. I really did like the representation. I thought it was a really, really fun read. I flew through it. Definitely probably one of my favorite reads of the month. There were some elements of the story that I did not see coming, and I really liked it. I, I think we're just supposed to get one more book in the series, but I haven't heard anything about it. Um, this is definitely the highlight book for me. I really did like all the romance elements, like the setting. It was very, very wintry, which I was reading this like um, during a snowstorm, so that was also really, really nice. But I really did like both characters, and I thought the elements of the story were really, really fun. If you struggled a little bit with Curses and Kisses, I would recommend you check this one out because I definitely preferred this one sort of like um, when I read How Not to Fall in Love. I liked her date, her second book a little bit more. So maybe check this out if you were, if you want a wintery read because it definitely classifies as that and has some fun characters. So definitely check it out. Um, and then the next book I'm going to chat about and in this video and then the last book is The Behemoth that is house of earth and blood sarah j moss so i read about half this book realized i should probably have listened to it and then picked up the audiobook i did like this book i will say that i i did enjoy it it was a very fast-paced story you basically follow a girl named bryce quinlan and she is half fey her identity is not revealed until the very end of the book which i thought was really interesting and she she sort of starts off the book in a pretty nice position she's the best friend but after a tragedy this book flash forwards a year and you sort of try to uncover the tragedy of what happened to her best friend and she sort of gets teamed up with this angel and stuff goes from there it is more romance heavy than i typically like but the world is just so compelling it was really really fun read i definitely would like to read more in this book in the series book two like literally just came out so I liked it. I think I'm probably going to stick to listening to them. I did enjoy it. It wasn't my favorite. It was a behemoth, as you can see, but I did like it. So I will definitely keep reading, probably trying to get the audiobook from my library or from Audible. I think it's I think it's an Audible exclusive, but I did like it. I would say the highlight books for me physically were probably The Last Chance Library and Of Princes and Promises. These are probably the two books I loved. And then the one that I struggle with is probably Broken Heart Fences and Other Things to Mend. Um, I didn't, I mean, I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, and the other book I struggled with was The Perilous Undertaking. So those are the couple books that did not wow me. Those are all the books that I tackled in the, the first half of February. I do have a week off from school, so I hope to get quite a bit of reading done and try to make some better on some of my challenges. But I will talk to you guys for my next video. Bye, friends.